Hey guys, so join along. We're headed to Maine and uh, probably the north woods of Maine and we have a goal in mind. Yeah, our goal is to not only see a moose in the wild, but to get photographs and video of a moose. And in best case scenario, we see a mama and a calf. That's the dream shot for both of us. Generally challenging to photograph them, but that is our ultimate goal. But any other wildlife we see, we'll be happy to photograph them too. So I'm looking forward to the trip. Yeah, we'll be in the deep woods of Northern Maine, off the grid, so uh, hopefully we can get some great shots. Wow, this road is demolished. Is he stuck? Or if I should get my pistol. How you doing? Huh? The journey started with a beautiful drive through Vermont and New Hampshire. Finally, after a whole day of driving, we were into Maine. It was time to find some moose. We planned to search some of the remote ponds of Maine to see if we could find some feeding moose in the water. Canoe was the only way to gain access. After hours of searching, we found our first moose.
This smooch didn't hang around long as the winds picked up dramatically and forced us back to shore. But we were greeted by a nice surprise on the drive back. A couple of young moose who weren't shy of vehicles. You could see they were shedding their winter fur and getting ready for summer. It's 10 minutes till 10. We're sitting in a gas station parking lot making grilled cheese because we're on a mad dash to head further north so we can be in the right location to make sure that we can get up early in the morning so we can be out at 4.30 a.m. to see Mama Moose and Baby Moose. So that's what we're doing and we're eating really poorly. Grilled cheese, grown men and grilled cheese. But whatever it takes. Moose in the road. That's what just happened. So far we've seen more moose coming the other way in oncoming traffic than other cars. This is true. One moose, no car is coming the other way. So I think there really is a more moose than people ratio. They're really creepy with the wind going like that and these little weird plus you know what that story's in my head i'm locking the doors what the uh satanic worshipers that we heard about they're possibly out here oh. going through the gates of hell or here or something saint not is what it says in there all right see it saint nut not nut saint nut 
This is creepy. Yeah, it is. Do you catch yourself every time we go by a clearing that you're like jerking your head to see if there's anything down in that clearing? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so guys, we've been on this, uh, it's a logging road and we've been on it for several hours, crossing a bridge now. And uh, part of it's really smooth and most of it's not. We had, uh, we had to duct tape the drawers closed. But anyway, we're headed, we're going to find a campsite here that we think is gonna be the most uh, moose infested, which means uh, near a bog and near mosquitoes. The mosquitoes have been rough. Yeah, it seems like even when the rain, mosquitoes, they grab you. We also haven't had cell service for about a day now. Yeah. So we're really off the grid. Well, we're going to go see some uh, steam locomotives that were abandoned in the woods that uh, ought to be interesting. And the tramway. That's interesting to think that they put a railroad through here many, many years ago and abandoned it. So Paul, what's this uh, fancy contraption you got around your face? Well, we're we're not what is it? The beekeeper. We're not being beekeepers. Definitely mosquito keepers today, though. Imagine if you came here and didn't actually have the bug nuts. I don't know if you can see, but there is just mosquitoes, hundreds of them around you. As soon as you stop, they just swarm you. It's nuts. Yeah, and getting in and out of the sprinter, you have to do it quickly. So. So when I keep moving, I can just feel them on my hands as I'm filming this. This is the only part of my skin exposed. 
this is yeah for real so it's it's crazy but that's okay it's part of it isn't it yep it's part of the journey yes yeah, it's, it's nature <laughs> You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. I mean, just think of the, the hours it took to build that. And it was all built by hand. Wow, you got a lot of mosquitoes around you. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like they're attacking my hands. Yeah. I'm trying to get mine too. But the railroad operation ended in 1933. The locomotives were obsolete, not worth transporting for reuse elsewhere. Ah, oh, that's hard to believe, but anyway. Remains of the 1,500 foot trestle which crossed the northwest arm of Chamberlain Lake is still an impressive site. But anyway, so they're talking about the bridge and everything. But so they just said, we're done. Like as soon as you put your hand out, the mosquito will just go. There's like 40 of them on my camera right now. Oh, that was Oh boy. stuff. Or is he waving us on? I don't know. It looks kind of stuck. Why is he off the road? 
if I should get my pistol. How you doing? Huh? You come along at the right time. Oh, did you get stuck? Uh, just a van, a Sprinter van. Have you got a, uh, any hook on the back? Yeah, I can try to pull you out. Okay, yeah. Would you, is it soft up there or something? Well, I just got right along the edge and just went right down on it. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, uh, I think it'll come out. I'm just about ready to try to back it out, but I, I don't. Well, let me try to get past you. Now, uh, you got something on the back of your truck? Yeah. Because I got a ball of mine and I got a, I got a nice logging chain. Yeah, well, I've got a strap. Okay, well, yeah. come on down. All right, let me try to get past you there. Hopefully I don't slide off into anything soft there. Oh, he's in there good. There he is. No, we're from many hours away. So how long have you been in the area? Uh, probably three or four days. Yeah. Yeah. Not many fish around, are there? We've got out of my on this camp. That's cool. So this is where the trip got really exciting. After we did canoe, we did driving, we did hiking, we decided to charter a seaplane and uh, our pilot Roger definitely made it fun. What was exciting for me was 12 million acres of no development, yep. no road signs, no gas stations, no stores, and absolutely no people. And you can really see that from the sky. So we're flying in the seaplane, and you know, we're getting a great view of Maine and all the little lakes and ponds. It's crazy how many different ponds and lakes there are up, are up there. And then uh, our pilot says he saw a moose. So, me and Paul, we look out the window real fast, and of course, we don't see anything. And then he swings, he does a big bank, and he swings by again, and he points to this little, uh, was it a bog area, right? A little marshy bog area that he saw it in, and we still didn't see it, but we knew that there was a moose in the area, and it kind of gave us a point to like, focus on from the sky. So then that's where the moose were really traveling, giving us a great opportunity to get on the ground, get in the woods, and find that shot we were there for, which we were looking for the mother and her calf. 